program, um, basically coming out of our UST TDA conferences over the past few years, um, Sally and I have both started groups that meet once a month um, outside of the conference so that we can continue these conversations. As you heard, a lot of well, the panels that we had today or this week came from some of the topics that we discussed in our different groups. Um, we alternate months, so it's not two different events each month. Um, so Sally's event was this month, mine will be next month. Um, and there's just about an hour, hour and a half of your time. Um, and we're always looking for presenters and topics for what we can talk about, um, just to keep the communication going, to keep the networking going and the engagement going. So I can actually, um, I'll pull up um, the website. Oh, goodness. Or you can see a little bit more about our group. So if you go to usctda.org, you'll see uh, the community engagement group here, and then also the formatting users group. So I chair the community engagement group. You can learn a little bit more about it here. Um, whereas the formatting users group really focuses on the idea of the formatting of the document, looking at like the different formatting styles, changes that they may want to make. Our group focuses on the broader, some of the broader questions and contexts. We also focus on how we as professionals can develop and learn and grow. Some of the past sessions that we've had um, include how to foster relationships with the library and looking at how to strengthen those ties or develop those ties. We've done one on self-care for thesis reviewers, especially during the, the busy deposit weeks. We had a, a professional come in and talk to us about strategies to take care of yourself and make sure um, that you're helping yourself so that you can help your students. Um, GW led one that was really great on thinking about abstracts and metadata and you know how we can help students increase the findability of their work by thinking about metadata instead of just throwing some subjects in there, throwing words in there. Um, and Lily gave a presentation too on cross-training, which was actually really wonderful. I think a lot of us are kind of one-stop shops and if we are not here, then people do not graduate, you know? And so it's thinking about how we can train others and how we can advocate for ourselves to our supervisors so that we can get the support that we need. Um, I think, you know, upcoming topics that we'll be talking about include accessibility, which I feel like has been kind of the theme of this conference. We're gonna visit that as well. Um, but I think too, if you have any ideas on topics that you want to explore or that you have questions about, please don't hesitate to reach out to me because we would love to have you. Um, you don't have to do a really, you don't have to have, do a PowerPoint. You don't have to do, do it, you can do as much or as little as you like. We just like having that discussion and asking those questions. I think as a board member, it also helps us as we're planning the conference to figure out what are the things that people want to know about and how can we put that in our call for papers and how can we get the answers to those questions that, that you have. Um, so I think that's, that's it for the community engagement group. If you want to join, um, you can complete the form or you can email me and we'll get you on the list. Again, we meet just for an hour, hour and a half every other month. My name is Sally Evans. I'm the coordinator of dissertation and thesis services at George Mason University. And we started the um, formatting users group in, oh, I guess the first time we met was in February, 2021. Uh, we first talked about it at the conference in, um, uh, in 2020, and then it came around in 2021. So I'd say we have about uh, between 50 and 60, 50 and 60 participants now. Yeah, yeah what? Yeah. If, if you hear the laptop speakers on, if you mute, then we have an echo on. Okay. And we okay. Have a, so okay, can we? So will I turn the speakers? Okay, my speakers are off. My laptop speakers are off. So, yeah, so if I talk into the phone, then people can hear me and then just don't talk when Emily's talking and turn the speaker back on. Sure, that sounds fine. Keep going. <laughs> 
Okay, so um, anyway, um, I hope everybody can hear me. My speaker, my speaker is off. Um, <clears throat> so we do have uh, bi-monthly meetings. They're online. Um, they work better. <laughs> the video and um, and mic work better there. <laughs> so we meet um, every other month. Our next meeting will be in November on um, that's the, always the third Wednesday of the month at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and all the times are listed there. We hope you can make it in November. It's open to everybody. Um, if there are people at your at your institution or university that would be interested in coming but aren't here today, absolutely please share this info with them. Um, we've had a variety of conversations about, you know, formatting, formatting rules. Um, you know, we've had uh, speakers come to talk to us about, uh, let's see, gosh, what all, um, about um, like born digital ETDs and ETDs, this kind of goes with what um, Kim was talking about yesterday in her session about, um, not Kim, who am I thinking of? The, the session yesterday about um, like, oh yeah, what's Kim? The session yesterday about um, different ETDs, you know, the ones that are non-traditional, and by that I don't mean the manuscript style ETDs, but the ones that are, uh, the, where the dissertation itself becomes the becomes less of the important part and the material, whether it's you know, a website or a online archive or something, that's the important thing. So we've had someone come and talk to us about that and we're looking forward to what's coming next. So if you have any questions about it, please let me know. I'm going to put my um, actually my, yeah, my email address is up there. So if you would like to contact me, please do. Um, and if you would like to, uh, you can also complete the form and I will add you to our listserv. Perfect. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Sally. Thank you. Um, and I think one last thing that I want to plug, if that's OK, is our regional representatives. So in the past year, we have done a call for regional representatives to um, help us out with different things. We've had quite a few here. There's a couple in this room. Um, Catherine is one of our regional representatives. So is Kim. Um, I think John is online, John Foudreau, and there may be others online too. Um, but what, what's great about this is that we, we love your help. We love learning from you. We'd love to get people more into the local PDA. Um, so if you're interested in being a regional representative, you know, please, please let us know. Please reach out to me and I can talk to you a little bit more about what it is. <clears throat> but you see some of the um, responsibilities, you know, helping out with the conference by moderating sessions, sending um, hello emails to new members, and really helping conversations continue in the regions. Because I know we've had regions who are pretty active. I know the Midwest region has done its own conferences sometimes. And so it's this network of people to help keep conversations going in your own regions with with the community around you um, and keeping that interaction going throughout the year. I think it's also really great for people who are starting off in their role. I remember when I started uh, at um, I started my job. I'd been working there for like a month and then I came to this conference and I still didn't really know what I was supposed to do every day. I, um, and so meeting people here was a really great way to have some people I could ask questions and understand better how things, how things go. And so that's part of the role of the regional representatives as well. Um, I know it says that there's a deadline, uh, but that deadline does not exist anymore. So if you want to reach out to us, just, you know, let us know we're missing some, we need a regional representative, another one for, for region two. We're also looking for another regional representative for region five. Um, the idea is to have at least one person from the library side in each region and at least one person in the grad school side in each region. Um, and so you can see um, a little bit about some of our, our members here um, and we'll get the full list up real soon. But, all right. Are there any questions from anybody in the room or online about anything? I could say, I could make a comment about the, um, the formatting users group. I'm a part of that group, and um, I think the reason that we established that group, and this also bleeds into the community um, 
engagement group is that we often feel alone in our jobs, like we're the only ones and no one really understands what we do and we don't really have a lot of support. So we created this, this group to support each other um, and share technical expertise. And it's been really valuable in that way. So if you're not a part of it, I encourage you to do so. Thank you. Who else? You have good audio, I just wanted to say. And thanks to Sally and Emily for facilitating these groups. That's been wonderful. Absolutely. I think that we're going in new and wonderful directions um, with the organization. Outreach has been fantastic. Enthusiasm, I would like to exude over to you guys and continue this seriously. I think you guys have a lot of fun, a lot of fun engaging yourselves with the USCTDA. Um, so, more comments, questions, concerns about the task at hand? Anything on your mind? Now that I've got the microphone in, you're like, oh my God, standing <laughs> up here. I don't want to say anything, but it sounds stupid. Nothing is stupid, so we appreciate all, um, all of your um, you know, concerns. And as I mentioned yesterday, we get into that. And I believe it's the only way we can improve. Um, we will do a post conference here, but it's a long time to dust settle. I'll assemble that in our Google Forms and send the blank note. And we really would appreciate your feedback. In more detail, but while we're here today, what time are we at? Now? It's about yeah, yeah, three minutes. Ten, seven, okay. Do you all mind if we want or need to go over? If somebody needs to catch a flight or whatever, that's fine too. We would understand, but I certainly like to give everybody the opportunity since we don't have any other sessions planned after this um, to take advantage of our culminating session here. So, um, okay. So, what's on people's minds here? Talk show for an hour. Go around. Tim, you always have an opinion, and we know you're not shy. We would like to share just something off the top of your head. You know, really, I think, I think for me, uh, I think the accessibility uh, issue is probably the number, number one thing on my mind. Um, and got some really good uh, feedback from this conference in terms of some direction. And I think, you know, a couple of main things. Um, you know, mowing in my head, but you know, I think we need to come up with the graduate school, perhaps of our our, um, our own in MDAC document. Is that right? Yeah. MDAS document. Um, you know, we're just we're finding the, the going slow at Ohio State with this stuff. I don't know if it's going to be so big, um, but the other thing I'm taking out of this too is that we need help. Um, some of you have some really great partners in your library and we've always gotten along with the library well we work well with the library we don't when we do we don't really work with them very much because of ohio link the documents are going through them and ohio link sends a document to the library so we don't really have any they have no feedback in formatting or the accessibility or any of this stuff so you know i, I don't think the graduate school would, it's you know, we can't take all this on ourselves or should we to be honest uh, it's a much bigger issue, and uh, so we have an accessibility obviously on campus, but you know they have not really been involved. So I think we need to take the bull by the horns, to be honest, uh, and come up with something ourselves. Uh, we talked about uh, you know we might have, to have a couple, or you know, again, kind of thinking what we need in terms of documents that students are producing right now that they are not making accessible, but we're still going to have to publish it uh, at a point where Ohio Link is you know, moved on to their new system. So we might need one for that and then one for the future going forward or try to combine it with something. But I think something that we can, you know, we can put forth and, and I I ask it to this, uh, I think I asked actually about you, who has the authority, right, to, to do that? And uh, um, I, and Kim said that she wrote her initial one and her dean approved it, right? And um, so maybe it's it, it's that's a route or maybe we need to bring in our ADA coordinator and um, have that person, um, you know, Give us the blessing on that. Um, you know, I think the legal aspect is certainly one part of this, obviously. Um, and uh, so, anyway, I think we—I've really taken that away from this. And I think one, we need to—we're we're not making any traction because with what's been going on, we're not getting anywhere. So we're just going to have to take it pulled by the horns. But I do want to bring other people in. You know, I'm going to tell my supervisor that that's exactly what we need to do. We need to reach out to the library accessibility office. 
you're going to need to come on board with this. This is not a graduate school, just a graduate school issue. This is a university issue for their documents. So that's really the biggest thing right now, I think, for me in, in uh, terms of that. So. Thank you so much, Tim. And I think, you know, in terms of the um, equity piece of this, this is like really vital that we fight for this. Um, you know, uh, so the more diverse groups of people can access this information, I guess, a lot of point of um, accessibility. And then um, we can look at various means of coordination. We have federal compliance of what the ideals should be, standards, and so forth. We have kind of level we're um, pushing or um, controlling or fighting with our <laughs> fellow entities on campus to implement these things. Libraries normally, I would think, if you get the right people, certainly like metadata librarians can get it, um, but those key administrators may not necessarily understand that component. But in terms of university-wide support, I would say that's key. And then generally, I would think that people in the library environment would be a little more in tune with it, but then again, it depends what department you're talking about. Um, and um, the other piece I would like to know when we research this, um, and organizations that create standards, for example, meta archives, and with all their EDD toolkit, things on preservation and so forth, these resources that they've developed and recommendations and best practices, um, what, to what extent, if any, have they incorporated accessibility within their framework? Y'all know what I'm talking about now. Okay, I see Emily has a burning question. I was going to so, piggyback off that. Please. So at Ohio Link, we've tried to take the approach of giving guidance and trying to get a starting point for our institutions, but letting them customize what they need to locally because what they're able to do and what they want to do is going to be different from institution to institution. So we have a website that we've put up with resources, especially linking out to other departments and institutions nationwide that already do a lot of this work and set up tutorials and link to videos for the student. So we've been linking out so that no one has to recreate the wheel necessarily. You can take inspiration, use stuff, point to people or point to things already there if you need. And we've been trying to focus more on the institution putting in together their local MDAS and training and thinking about their workflow for their staffing. So with that, if USETDA or this community engagement group in particular wants to take on accessibility as a bigger topic, that would be fantastic. I know Judy and my coworker Judy and I probably don't want to take on keeping up those resources. There's probably better stuff. You might even categorize things, students versus staff training, and all that stuff. And I think that would be a valuable resource, because if we're all looking for the same information, we might as well put it in one place. And USETA and this conference has shown that everyone seems to be working on digital accessibility or trying to figure it out. And so I think I would definitely be willing to help with something like that and get something started based on what we have. And maybe other people have stuff that they could add as well. I know there's already some templates and tip sheets that people are working on. So I think if people are willing to share them and aggregate them, that would be perfect for USETA. Thank you, Emily. And I would just like to put in a good pitch for Ohio Link because it really, a lot of the years, been team players from the early years working with NDLCD developing standards even before, you know, ETD is the whole network thing would you know, get involved. Um, but um, in terms of developing standards and then this wonderful, marvelous statewide infrastructure that we've developed, there's a similar, I suppose, infrastructure in the state of Texas with the Texas Digital Libraries, and you guys are willing to share at least some basic um, notions of how to do this. And so let's continue um, having those dialogues. Um, sharing that information so that maybe other state and regional groups can adapt similar things. God forbid we could ever do that at a national level and organize ourselves <laughs> like some other places do. And I know in Europe they've done you know, concerted efforts for that. But you know, we're a well moving group and a lot of different players in the mix often bring some new and innovative ideas forth. So, you know, many models work. Um, so what else is it um, burning questions, comments, concerns on people's minds this morning? Austin, anything interesting you like observations like you said about the conference? I'm going to put you on the slide. 
Yeah, so with ProQuest, what are you guys doing with accessibility? Are you aware of any kind of recent developments? Or? We're working on it, trying to figure out how to solve the problems. Well, so we know you're always team players as well. So we love that you do the administrative interfaces. Very cool. And um, so, yeah, um, and I suppose is there, has anybody had any issues with, for example, the ADD administrator and with their students who may have disability issues using the system? I would think that you've already gone through all that. Um, good. good. There we go. Okay, see, I missed out on a lot of these things. I'm going to bring you to catch up with the videos. But, um, yeah, excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Um, so, um, Where's my We're almost at 10.30. 10.30. Okay. So I suppose that's a good time to wrap up on this. Um, yeah. We had anything else that we want to contribute? Go into the ghost light for lunch if anyone wants to come. Okay. I'm trying to go slide in for lunch at what time? Probably 12.30. 12.30. Okay. So, yeah. I'm to try to <laughs> Yeah. I had breakfast this morning. It's really good. Yeah, first floor. So, uh, well, there's a comment it. online. I think we oh, could, yeah, I think we could find value in developing a set of tiered standards, standards with related tools and shared policies to help inform all of us. Oh, great. Who, who's telling John us Fudra. Oh, thank you, John. For accessibility. Okay. <laughs> Do we have anything else? I mean, John. Worthy for the comments? Or? John, you could unmute if you wanted to say something. Oh, yeah. Uh, if any of our virtual participants would like to unmute, um, talk to us like, through the audio and or video, we can re welcome that. We'll give a second for people to react to that comment. It looks like I have like, um, 10 people. Is it the number on top of them? Mm -hmm. um, Virtually joining us. So, okay. And people might be shy, so that's okay. But I wanted to give people an opportunity, assuming people can hear me, because <laughs> I haven't checked back from John, I have an experience. John Fudre says he lost his voice yesterday, so it would be oh. rather hard to understand him. But I guess... yeah, well, we love technology because there are many means <laughs> with which to communicate. So, um, oh, there. Okay, so people virtually <clears throat> I guess we should be mindful of that. But then I do get my back turned to the in-person audience. This is so awkward. Okay, so with that, I think we're going to um, wrap up. Um, Larry, this is the final opportunity. We're wrapping up the session. Did you have anything you would like to share with the audience? Comments, questions, concerns, a final goodbye? We're talking about like, the future of the USCTDA, and I know you didn't want to say already. Yeah. And about you know the, the working with the, 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 um, the formatting the group and the community engagement. And our USCTD, USCTDA regional representatives, and how we can all contribute throughout the year to make things happen. So that's where we're at. We've had you know, kind of interesting dialogues about yeah, I just, accessibility and things. But as, um, as I mentioned this morning, I think there's some, probably some other ways that we can uh, put the program together rather than relying on what we relied on this time. And actually, we do some testing online before you know we come close to the meeting. Great, great. Yeah, Larry and I were talking at breakfast about um, other um, technology pieces, for example, using Zoom. And we have to look into that. Well, we did our first virtual conference two years ago. Um, that was quite a, a feat because um, we had to defeat the technology at the time. The um, uh, the Zoom stream. You could only have one stream institution and um, so we had three different institutional streams going on to do three concurrent breakout sessions you know that kind of mode um, we had to map that out on a, on a web page it wasn't fancy dynamic like in Hotman so you have years of happening now but we had the basic links and things and people and they had to enter passwords along the way and we had to kind of keep that secret because you know the registration process and all that um, but we worked through you know um, it was a little clunky but we got that happen. I think now you can probably have multiple streams, but we'll check into these kind of possibilities. Zoom has been you know, a fairly reliable interface for a lot of things. People are used to using it. 
And then we'll look at how we could improve if we continue to use them. For example, a hot interface because we can have access to it very inexpensively. And we'd be happy to try and extend that out and make arrangements if you all want to um, do regional conferences. One thing that um, we would probably, the board of directors needs to discuss this, but I think that if we wanted to promote in-person regional conferences, we would want those people to also make it a hybrid event. So one way or another using technology, whether it's Zoom or Hopin, um, to make that available to everyone nationwide or worldwide, whatever, um, so that we can continue this um, conversation and continue the community spirit and all of that. Um, at the very minimum, I can guarantee um, the USCTA will in the future, or next year, for example, in the immediate future, put on a virtual national conference. Whether we get local hosts to work with us and whether we can afford to put on an in-person event in conjunction with that, um, you know, time will tell and the input from you all. Okay. So um, either way, we will survive, but we do want to find ways to grow the event. And that's one way that we'll be looking at is growing the avenues of getting together in different ways, different formats and so forth, and different technologies. And so I really appreciate um, your comments on it this morning, Larry. Well, actually, I, I would go farther than that. Please. I would kind of recommend that people think about generating, if, if they have a presentation, for example, generate that presentation prior to the meeting, okay? And either save an import MP4 of it, yeah, pre recorded, yeah, pre recorded, and it can even be posted before they get to the meeting, as far as that goes. There are some conferences too. When we get here, we've already seen it, we know what it's about, we know what kind of questions we want to ask. Okay, that's smart. Yeah. Yeah. We just do a review of it and then ask questions. Yeah, and I think the other aspect we discussed was it's a backup to the technology for online using the interface and things fail, you always then have a pre-recorded thing you can modify, put that on and continue to show for you get the vital information. I think most of us are capable of doing that. We all of us yeah. right this yeah so we can offer a game a little bit and um, keep it on a more professional level. Very good consideration absolutely um in fact we did this a little bit with our poster present the presenters because three of them were in person here but we wanted to be able to capture that experience and be able to post it online eventually so we had them send us pre-recorded videos and we had one virtual person um, who unfortunately in the session did not get recorded by email there and asked her to do the same and send us a you know five or ten minute video for giving your poster presentation so there's no reason any of us could do that most of us have access to technology, but we can also think about that in terms of resources, not everybody has access to Captiva or whatever the um, latest software is to do, you know, the, all the bells and whistles, but there are many ways to do that as well, and we can think of some standards of you know, what we would expect and so forth, and guidelines to um, to create those things and make that happen. Good, good. So, I guess, anything else for the good of the order, gang? Because I know you know the way I want to be too. But I am so delighted that we were able to make this happen for you to join us, the virtual people um, and our in-person um, audience. And um, so um, here's to next year, gang. Thank and you, I'll John. give you all a uh, few. Thank you.